What's up, Energon Radars and Kitten Calendars? My name is Martini, and I am here joined by my boss and co-worker. Welcome to the first episode of the Real Effing Deal Podcast, your daily source for UFOs, alien conspiracies, and babes. Today, we're going to be talking about the 15th anniversary of the 2007 Transformers film directed by our lord and savior, Michael Bay. So welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the first edition of the Real Effing Deal podcast here, of course, on our channel. And, of course, I am joined. My name is David, if you haven't known me yet. <laughs> and I am joined by my friends and co-workers, of course, Martini and Malachi. The yes. Seekers in Crime. Yes. Yeah. What's up, yeah. guys? Hello, everyone. I am once again here on a video. I haven't been yes. one of these for a while. This is this. I make I make my reappearance. Yeah, it's been some while since you last appeared, but yeah, you're back it's... from the depths of Cybertron. I and am. Now, I am. Yeah, and now today, we have a very special occasion. We're gonna start first episode of a very special occasion, the first movie that started it all, the whole Bayverse, the whole Bayhem, everything. The, the, the triple B Michael Bay movie making no not that but still. <laughs> uh, the original 07 Transformers movies is 15 years actually just today this day that we're recording right now um, so I thought what better way to celebrate by talking about our experiences and how much like the 07 movie impacted us in general so yeah uh, I would like to start by just Asking you guys out of curiosity, when and where was the first time you saw the movie, actually? And um, you, you can go first, Martini, if you want. <clears throat> all right. Okay, I'm going to go first. Um, hmm. That's interesting. The first time I think I ever saw the movie was sadly not in the cinema. I think my... I, I remember my... My dad had like a, because it was shortly after I kind of got introduced to the whole concept of Transformers because I I remember that my first ever experience with with the franchise is was I bought like a like a figure set or a toy set of animated Megatron and Optimus and they were mm -hmm. in like their Cybertron modes and that toy came bundled with the first. Um, like I don't remember if it was season or episode of the uh, Transformers animated series, oh. and you know that came out in two thousand and seven. So I think that shortly after that, um, my dad probably bought, or well, I'm gonna be re I'm gonna be real here. Uh, he probably didn't buy it, but he probably downloaded off of the internet <laughs> and burned on a CD like the the original Transformers movies. Uh, or the first one, at least, because I, I think the second one hadn't come out yet. So, and that was when, you know, I got kind of introduced to the to the whole, you know, Bavers. But it's interesting because my first Transformer experience was with Animated and not with <coughs> Michael Bay. Ah. Okay. That, that is interesting. I mean, I can tell you, like, that is kind of the same experience here, actually. Um, so I, I mean, I've, I've told this already a couple of times, but the first time I saw for, well, or ever had any contact with Transformers, I think was, uh, when I found a comic, it was a random comic, not even about Transformers and they included like a Transformers disc. I still to this day don't remember what kind of Transformers, if it was Armada or what, I have no idea. Um, but it was just very, very over the top, like big big ass megatron and big very cheesy lines and everything um and could have been cybertron could be could be um so yeah i watched it and i re remember the only thing that i thought was that for, uh, first of all this is cool and second of all damn is this over the top uh and yeah th and then one a few weeks and months or even year maybe a year later um going around to like a shop in the seat like transformers 07 lying around and i'm like i remember this <laughs> and then i picked it up and yeah from then on it happened <laughs> so how was it with you malachi um 
Well, I mean, I remember when Martin was kind of explaining it. It's it sounded so sort of similar to mine, but then it kind of derailed a little bit off. But um, I didn't. I also didn't see it in theaters. Um, I can't remember say. exactly how it went because I was like, when the movie actually came out, I was probably like four, I think, and maybe <laughs> five. I don't know. I think it was four. Well, four, I was four the year it came out. And I didn't see it in theaters. And I don't know if it was it might have been the year after. I don't know. And like I said, I can't remember really what happened. I just remember my dad came home. And I don't know if like I asked him to get it or he just got it. But he came home with the DVD of Transformers 2007. And I was like, okay, you know, we'll watch this, you know. And then, um, we watched it. And uh, I, be, I really loved it. I became a, a mega fan. <laughs> Like I am now, <laughs> and uh, I watched every single f- uh, Babers film with my dad in the theater since. Yeah, yeah, like same. I, it, like the yeah, those seven movies literally the only one that like I haven't seen in cinemas. Everything else I've seen. Yeah, and like they had that whole thing like recently with like it going back in theaters, but I think it's only in, like the U.S. Mm-hmm. or something, or like it because- wasn't yeah. only in the U.S. And well, I was so mad. I, know. I was so mad. I that, really wanted yeah. to watch it. I was. I was literally like refreshing my like uh, cinema cinema's website, like the ones oh, we yeah, have too. here every single day to see if it popped up. Yeah, yeah, same. I, I was also like, I was when I read that, I was like, oh god, oh wow, it's coming back in cinema. This is my chance. And I was googling high speed, and then I found out it's just American. I was sad. Yeah, because I would have wanted to watch that with my dad. I would have loved to see that in theaters, but would have nah, been awesome. Only in yeah. America. Yeah, of course. Only yeah. for America. Yes, yeah. America. <laughs> but yeah, so what, what? What can you do? Yeah, I, I was thinking because, like, in our cinema, you can rent like a full on uh, room. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was thinking, just just out of spite, I'll get the four K, and I'm like, just show it while I'm sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> how much? How much would that even cost to do that? I have no idea. Probably, probably around eighty to a hundred bucks. Oh jeez. Oh. Honestly, I thought it would be I... more. To be honest, knowing today, yeah, knowing today and like how much stuff is, but still, yeah, yeah, but yeah. Anyway, so yeah, that's sad. That it's not coming here. Don't even know oh, yeah. why. Why couldn't? Yeah. Yeah, I don't get why they only did it in like America. Like they probably could have made some like some money if they put it in more places, but. Yeah, they probably go, pr- I, probably I think goes. probably, you know, since it's a Bavers film, they kind of underestimate the fandom. And, you know, pr- they probably said, like, oh, we're going to re-release it and, you know, just, like, waste money or something like that. Uh, but yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure they would have won money. Yeah, I, 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 think, I mean, uh, is there any I think probably right many na- people watched it? Yeah, I mean, probably Hasbro right now is just like, ah, oh, Bavers, Bavers bad. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I probably think they only love they show the papers as like in studio series, and as soon mm. as they finish, you know, like the five last night films, I think that's it. Like, I mean, the five films up until the last night, that's it for Bavers toys in general, apart from like movie masterpiece, in my opinion. Yeah, and then it's just you know, Rise of the Beasts, Rise of the Beasts, and more Rise of the Beasts. Yeah, I mean, because now, now they're just doing a bunch of like Beast War stuff now. Which seems mm. to be, like... Because they did, like, obviously, like, the... I mean, the whole war for Cybertron Trilogy wasn't Beast Wars. But they did Kingdom, like, the very end. That was Beast Wars. And now they're doing, like, right. Rise of the Beast. So, like, why are they just doing... Like, I don't... <laughs> I mean, I get it, like... You know, it's kind of... I think it's, like, an anniversary of it or something that's, like, coming up or has already come by or something. I can't remember. I mean, it happened a long time ago. In my opinion, it's just they're trying to exploit lesser known concepts since everyone is kind of you know fed up with g1 and um bavers in general so i think they're just trying to exploit other areas of the franchise yeah like vis-a-vis um beast wars uh also you know like armada stuff like that yeah yeah i wonder just like if i wonder if like because, like, the, I mean, obviously, like, then they, they had those films that it was, like, last week or whatever. Like when they had, um, when they had the 07 film back in theaters. I wonder if there's any, like, way to check and see how much money it made. Like, it probably won't ever be, but I'm just kind of interested to see how much money it made from being back, like, what, for, like, two days. 
It yeah. was, yeah, two days. It would be interesting to check out how much money it made. In That's my opinion, thinking. it probably was quite a little bit. Well, if, if it was a decent amount of money, you just think, like, if they could have made uh, probably a lot more if it was a decent amount. They could have made a lot more if it was, you know, in, like, more places than just America. But, you know. Yeah, true. Because, uh, you know, I, in my opinion, it's really underestimated how much people actually enjoy these movies. Yeah. But, like... It's kind of in a thin line, like, all right, yeah, we enjoy it. We still have brains, so stuff like the last night doesn't work, you know? Yeah. But in my opinion, 07 is filled with so much nostalgia in general that it would have made, at least I know in my country and, like, Latin America in general, it would have made a lot of money, like a, an absurd amount of money. Oh, yeah, I mean... And two, it's like with that, it's like, it's one of the better received films, even probably the best received one if you look at like, you know, reviews and stuff. It's like the best received mm -hmm. film. It's not like, it's not like you're putting The Last Night in theaters again, which would just be a, well, I mean, why'd they even do that? But just a, it's just an extreme example, but it's not yeah. like you're putting The Last Night in the theaters again. You're putting the 07 film, which is one of the best, along with like Dark on the Moon okay. and stuff. Exactly. I should, I should be back now. Uh, sorry, I had some internet problems right uh, now. <laughs> Well, that's but it's fine. No yeah, pr probably the NSA was hacking us because we were, you know, we're the real laughing deal podcast, so they tried to put us down. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you see. Casper was but trying what, to yeah. put us down for speaking the truth of <laughs> releasing 07 in more countries. <laughs> exactly, yeah. True. <laughs> but yeah, so that's so much about the re release, yeah. But, um, like, I mean, what I said before, before I got cut down by Hasbro. I'm <laughs> just kidding. Uh, was um, <laughs> even though we probably haven't seen it in the cinema uh, I mean it would have been probably amazing to see it in the cinema especially at our ages as a child but um, I think the, the impact that the movie had on us is still massive right oh mm -hmm. yeah uh, for, sure. for all of us so I mean well, I don't know about you guys but was it for you like immediately after you saw the movie you you turned into a very big fan or did that happen with later movies more oh instantly a fan for me I'm for, I mean, of course I was only like four or five but like I was instantly a fan because I, I was it was I'm pretty sure it was pretty instant for me from what I remember I just loved it so much mm -hmm. yeah same for me I, inst literally instant fan I remember that I, it was a very frequent, like, um, tradition of mine, I guess, to come back from school. You know, I, at that time, was, since I was still very little, I, uh, I came out at, like, lunchtime. So that's when I finished school. So I returned to my house. You know, I had lunch. And I remember perfectly that the only thing I watched for a very long time while I was eating lunch was the chase scene between Bumblebee uh, and Barricade. Uh, yeah. Nice. And man, I don't know why too. I loved it so much. I I don't know. It it was funny because I never actually got to the real robot fight. I just kind of cut it and then, you know, uh, rewind and watch the car thing again. I mean, it, it is, is a cool scene, though. Yeah, it's a cool scene, I agree. But interesting that you chose out of all the scenes this one. Oh, yeah, and that's true. the thing, you know. I never even watched like Mission City until I my like my brain developed a little bit more, and and I realized like, oh wait, there's more to this movie than just <laughs> two cars. Exactly. There's even more cars. Yeah. And a tank. <laughs> and a helicopter. And a heli and a jet. And a and a tank. And two jets actually. Two jets. Oh my. <laughs> and a tank and a mine clear. And a vehicle. radio. In a, re yeah, in a radio. radio, and a, sc a, sc a scorpion, giant scorpion. Yeah, exactly, a scorpion, True. and a I, telephone. I s yeah, and I still and say a mounted do machine. <laughs> I mean, you gotta say what you gotta say, but like the scene with Scorp. I mean, this is kind of already leading to the next point, but the scene with with Scorpionog when he appears and the music and ever it's just oh even yeah. If you are, even mm -hmm. if you aren't a Transformers fan, you can agree that that scene just from a from a filming point, you know. From a oh, film yeah. perspective, is a really great scene. Yeah, yeah it is. And like just the yeah, I mean the score itself is called score, but okay, it's a really great score. I love listening to it on repeat sometimes. Oh yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah, for sure. But yeah, I mean, you know what's funny though with me coming back to our previous point because we talked about the impact. I mean, it definitely turned me also into a Transformers fan, absolutely. Uh, because it was also at the perfect time because I watched it in 2008 and right after the movie, the second movie came out, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but I think the funny thing is that like the movie that made me into like a massive Transformers fan was <laughs> funny enough the second one. Um, mm. cause I was a fan after the first one and I really was a fan after the, the second one and here comes the funny b- part though even though when I watched the second movie in the cinema I remember walking out and like as a young teenager I was like that wasn't that good <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> but you know the funny thing even though I said that and I st- there are many par- par- points I said back then that I still believe um, I think back then the big biggest thing that like annoyed me was that like the fallen just died like this. But, um, but mm, I guess yeah. But I remember even though I said that like I I I watched the movie uh, like I replayed with the toys these action scenes over and over and over. So probably that's what made me into such a big fan. Like the action scenes are still great in the second one. Um, but yeah. It definitely also had a big impact on me, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Like, I remember for me, like, it was, like, I wouldn't say insane, but I just, I remember, because this is, like, a fact I always think about, and I'm like, this is crazy I did this. But, um, because I had, like, a little, like, portable, portable DVD player oh, you nice. could play DVDs yeah. on. And mm-hmm. <laughs> being the kid I was, I did this for, like, years. Um, I think I, I stopped doing it around probably the time... I think it was before the last night came out. I stopped doing it, mm-hmm. but um, really, like you year... did that for so long. Well, I'll tell you what it was that I did. <laughs> um, okay, okay. But yeah, I did it for this long though. I did it f- since I probably around when I started watching the first movie, or at least the, at least very least the Revenge of the Fallen to around before the last night came out. Was I had a portable DVD player, and <laughs> every every night when I ate supper, I would watch one of the films. <laughs> Yeah, and obviously, it just nice. got more and more when more of the films came out. I just watch whatever mm. ones. I'd watch fight scenes. I'd watch anything. Because usually, when I'm when I was done supper, I'd get a little action action figure and I'd like play around with him, pretend that he's in the film and he's doing a bunch of stuff. Oh my! I think about it. I'm like, I can't believe I did that. <laughs> see guys, if, but see guys, yeah. if you say you're a dedicated Transformers fan, you haven't heard this guy yet or seen this guy. Yet. <laughs> this <Yeah>. is dedication. <laughs> like, <laughs> like. I, I just liked it that much. I, like I said, I watched it while I was eating supper, and mm. like I'd even like get a figure, and like I'd start playing around with him, and like pretend that like he's in the film doing stuff or whatever. Like, yeah. <laughs> I was. You're like, not a you know. transform a true Transformers fan unless you watch one of the films in one of the three big meals, be it breakfast, <laughs> lunch, uh, or dinner. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm telling yeah, you, like, true. I and I and you just think about this. I did that for years, and as more films came out. I, I that was pretty much every supper I did that. So for most of the parts of the film, I have a pretty good memory of pretty much everything. I just I guess I didn't do that for the last night, and I didn't do I definitely didn't do that for, for Bumblebee. And obviously I didn't do oh, it I for don't. well I, at first I didn't do it for trans the first Transformers movie mm-hmm. for, for for all other films I did that for. Well, I don't get why you didn't do that for the last night, <laughs> David. You need to stop. <laughs> <laughs> you need to stop yeah, need right to now. David. You need True. to we're, stop. <laughs> but no, we're trying yeah, no, to I, be positive here. <laughs> <laughs> but but no, because I, I was starting to get older and stuff. I, I stopped using it as much, so that's why I stopped. I wasn't mm. watching. Like I didn't use the little DVD player anymore. I I, I always called it. I always called it the little movie machine. But that's why I, I like, stopped. But yeah, yeah the funny thing is, I never had one of these portable DVD players, but I remember the only experience, like the like the, the portable DVD player, really is the two thousands to me. Mm. Um, and mm. a friend of mine had it, and I remember. I mean, <laughs> um, I remember it was like uh, which grade was it? Ninth grade, and we were not supposed to watch it, but we we just didn't care. Like a friend of mine, and I were big big Saw fans, and you know, oh. back then, way too young, and you know. And we, I remember, like, on a school trip, we had this portable DVD player, and we watched the new song. Like, this oh. tiny-ass screen, it was so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. 
But yeah, that's what I remember. I, remember I always well. wanted a portable DVD player, like for the ones you put on a car. Mm-hmm. I remember there there were specific ones that you used for like yeah, they existed. Yeah, oh true, yeah. yeah, I always wanted one of those because I remember that very frequently at that age I went to visit my like my grandma mm-hmm. at her house and she lives out of the uh, out of the city, so yeah. it, it's it's like a two hour ride to where she lives and since I went yeah. so often at that time. I remember that I I always wanted to have a had a Transformers movie like on hand <laughs> to watch and I wanted to use it you know in the DVD player that was in the car. Sadly, yeah. we never got one and um then we evolved and you know Blu-rays started appearing and you know Apple TVs and mm. whatnot. YouTube started surfacing. Yeah. Uh we got laptops and you know that kind of was the end of it. You know, because we said we rewatched and replayed stuff, um, especially like I, I, I uh, when I really got into like buying and collecting the toys, um, I really loved. I mean, everyone probably loved to replay the scenes with the toys, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and <laughs> just so that you get the picture, how much I re reenacted those scenes back then as a child uh, and young teenager, you must imagine I. I have an Optimus toy. It's, it's probably After Dark of the Moon. I think that's when it got released. It was one of the first to have like the Matrix, you know, inside mm-hmm. the chest. And that's why I bought it because I'm a stupid fan and that's why I bought it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Um, and I re- and this figure, I'll just give you this riddle. Let's see if you get what scene I was reenacting with it the whole time. This figure right. has one weakness nowadays. It has a, a hell of a loose... Wait, which... Left shoulder. Okay, I know or right it is. shoulder, I think. Yeah, well, what I, it's is left. It? It's the right shoulder. You were reenacting the Sentinel fine, weren't you? Very good. It's the same. <laughs> yeah, it's the same. I mean, the Dark of the Moon Megatron really held up well because I ripped the head off a few times. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. <Yes. laughs> ripped Megatron. David yeah, the Hero <laughs> acting like fucking Sid from the first Toy Story film. I don't re- said I don't remember it anymore too much to know what you mean. The like kid that broke every every each one. Oh of his yeah. Toys. Oh no, I remember. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> kind of was. I mean, I always fixed it afterwards. So hey. <laughs> well, at least that's something. <laughs> that's something. Yeah. But yeah, that's just a funny side note. Um, but yeah, so that's that. So we can definitely see it has had a big impact. Um, oh, yeah. But now here is the question of questions to to the the bubble outside of the Transformers fandom. Can you say that the O seven movie is an objectively good movie? Like not talking Transformers fan wise, but just as a movie. Hmm. It's not perfect. Yeah, definitely not. Yeah, yeah definitely. B- not. It has its charm. It's not perfect. It's definitely missing some stuff, but. I will say that objectively, it is the best one out of the five of them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then probably comes Dark of the Moon. In my opinion, Dark of the Moon and O Seven really complement each other in the fact mm-hmm. that what one doesn't have, the other one does have. So I, you know, I see what th- you mean. Yeah, yeah. If we, if for example, Michael Bay was going to, you know, make a, like a sixth movie, uh, if and if I worked at Paramount, I was gonna be like, all right, look at these two, you know, see what's right, see what's wrong, take what works from each one of them, and then make a film. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. You you, you wouldn't say hell no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I'd honestly like to see. Michael yeah, Bay true. Give I'm it just another kidding. Try. I'm just bullshitting, of course. <laughs> but yeah, in my opinion, like what objectively the O7 has is, you know, it has good introduction, you know, to the franchise. Mm-hmm. It's a very good introductory movie. The true. only thing that you know it kind of lacks, which was initially because of of the fact that you know there wasn't going to be a there wasn't going to be another one, so mm. a lot of things had to be like a little rushed um in my opinion like the subplots you know the whole thing with sam and michaela and eventually you know the the you know sam and and the autobots and like the parents that stuff you know it's really funny it has good comedy in it has good acting in my opinion shia labeouf really sells 
like the sweaty teenager vibe of mm, Sam with Wiki. Yeah. Yeah. And in my opinion, it works really well in, in 07 because he's supposed to be, you know, in high school. So he's at like that really edgy teenager phase. Um, so in my opinion, he really sells that. And, you know, Bumblebee's like introduction, like from the beginning, you know it's Bumblebee. So you're kind of waiting for that um, moment to see him transform. And that pays off so well in the fight with Barricade. Mm. Um, sadly, the only thing that it doesn't have is, you know, more interactions with within the Decepticons. Um, yeah. More interactions within the the you know the autobots and and in my opinion the only sad thing about it also is that in my opinion the first one has like not the worst but like the weirdest filmed action sadly mm -hmm. it, in my opinion the action shouldn't have had so much so many cuts or so many weird angles there are some fights which i would have you know refilmed kind of like when Ironhide and Ratchet uh, kind of fight against Starscream, and we see it, like, from Sam's point of view, and he's, like, below him. I don't know. It's a good concept, but with the whole motion blur, I don't know, it makes me a little dizzy if I rewatch it mm -hmm. too many times. Mm. Um, and, but also what I think the 07 really nailed was, you know, the aesthetic of the robots like making it yeah. more alien more believable in my opinion it is the perfect adaptation for each one of the g1 characters mm -hmm. and for people you know who complain like they that they didn't have the original colors especially in terms of like the decepticons um you know in my opinion it makes sense because at that point the philosophy was more like you know they're robots in disguise so they scan the vehicle and the vehicle is one to the one with them so there wasn't the concept of like if b is yellow every vehicle he scans is gonna be yellow you know yeah, yeah. in the film all the vehicles he, he sc happens to scan are yellow you know i guess that's kind of lucky but mm -hmm. in my opinion that's also how it applies you know to starscream to iron hide ratchet and 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 every single robot really mm-hmm yeah, and also if you think about it design-wise, they really took a risk because they really went... I mean, they could have Out just there. tried to be G1 as close as possible, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it would, but they really tried to be out there. And uh, I remember from like watching people talk about it who back then were already old enough to realize the talks about the movie. Um, mm -hmm. People, like fans, really reacted badly when they first saw the designs, like in trailers and stuff. They were like, what the hell is this? Who is that? I don't recognize this character. Oh my god. Yeah, like they all look similar. You can't tell which was, which is which. Yeah. W which I would really disagree actually in the first movie. Because, I mean, I get it afterwards. But especially in the first movie, you can really tell who is who. I think color-wise also. Even if you yeah. aren't a fan. Even, if, yeah. even the Decepticons. You know, like Starscream yeah. is the weird triangle one. Megatron weirdo, yeah. is like the one that has a lot of spikes blackout is a the one with a cape and you know barricade is the one that's little and is a yeah. car exactly uh, and yeah i mean uh <laughs> um, yeah so i mean i to be honest i don't really get how people could confuse like i think in the fourth movie the criticism is that you can't you you kind of don't know who is who but some people say lockdown you don't know that it's lockdown sometimes i'm like really <laughs> But yeah, then, yeah. Um, in my opinion it is I guess the second I would say the probably the second film and yeah. the third one you couldn't tell which is which because they yeah, have like blocky that. designs and kind of washed out colors but in Age of Extinction everyone is really colorful you would yeah. literally just take it bare bones to Hound is the fat one Crosshairs is the green one you know Bumblebee is <laughs> yellow Drift is blue and I, I, that's it I, I, you know? are, you, are you fat shaming Hound? No, I'm just pointing out the designer's the philosophy. <laughs> hmm. And also, hmm. yeah, pointing out the obvious. I still, I still don't get how Transformers can be fat, but we'll just ignore that. Yeah. Uh, you, this is what you, this is what you call out. Remember, we have Dinobot babies. This is what confuses you know, me, man. This is like this mm. is all the stuff that confuses me. It's like Dinobot babies. Like what was it like? The knights. How, I, I, yeah, I guess the knights. Like Hound and Leadfoot being like kind of fat you know um mm, like kind what, of fat 
Okay, shh, shh, shh. Oh, oh Martini, hey. no. <laughs> oh, man. Um, um, what's it? The, the mini con having a gun for a, a penis. Um, oh, right. The Devastator's balls. Um, I could, you yeah. know, I could find some. Like, d- that stuff is like how, and there's like the hatchlings too, from like mm. Revenge of the Fallen and like Dark. Like, mm. How does that work? Like yeah. I thought the whole thing was that they're made, not born. But then they're like they're being hatched and stuff. Like it doesn't make any sense to me. We'll never like, know. We'll <sighs> never know. Yeah. I guess so. I, yeah. I think no one knows to be honest, but still, <laughs> not even them uh, and the scriptwriters. So, like yeah, I just have that. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, they're probably like, hey, it looks like aliens with the hatchlings. I, I, I think it could really be like that. Probably. Um, yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah, let's go back to positivity. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, with me, to be honest, I, even though, I, I mean, the first movie has had been on my first place for years and years, but, I mean, now it is funny enough it would be actually Dark of the Moon that I would put first. Just because I enjoyed overall just more, mm-hmm. um, but uh, objectively speaking, as a movie, yes, I would still take the first one. Yes, yeah. um, it's just it, I think it's one of those movies you can really just enjoy even if you aren't a fan because it's true. It's, it's first of all a nice, uh, definitely a nice action movie. I agree. The action scenes are, I mean, they're not bad by any means, but they're 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 more clunky if you know what i mean mm-hmm, in terms mm-hmm. of how they're made they're slower not as intricate obviously first of all because they had less money and of course they had less uh experience I mean, it was the first time they did that um but yeah i i get that but i think it's still a great action movie just, even if you just take it as an action movie and then of course yes the character wise and like the the plots were, like out of all the movies this is i think where the human character lines work the best inside of the yeah. movie yeah yeah um but yeah i agree if there are things that i would love to see more of course more more transformers action would have been nice or just scenes of them interacting but i think that's more to do actually with the budget than anything um yeah well i think also you know some things that uh, some other things that 07 did which one can appreciate not not just you know as a Transformers fan, but also like as a movie fan or maybe like a general nerd in general. In my opinion, it's three things. It you know it, it brought Bumblebee back to the mm-hmm. spotlight because before that we only had a hot shot. So it brought back Bumblebee. Definitely. Uh, as like the normal, you know, kid appeal character. That's the first yeah. thing. I, I can definitely relate to that because he was my favorite character when I was a kid. <laughs> but now uh, it's, also, it's always his prime now, so I've moved yeah. on from Bumblebee, but <clears throat> the second thing was bless you, Michael Bay, that it brought back Peter Cullen. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. Because before that we, we you know we had Gary Chalk. We, he was in Beast Wars, he was in Beast Machines, Armada, Energon, Cybertron, it was all Gary Chalk, and then you know Peter Cullen was, and even in in Transformers Animated, it was David Kay. So mm-hmm. you know we had Peter Cullen in the film, Optimus Prime's original voice, and you know after that it's been yeah. Peter Cullen ever since. Exactly. Yeah. And He's the really final thing. He's cemented himself. Yeah. Yeah, and the final thing, in my opinion, which is the most valuable one, is that it revolutionized CGI. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, definitely. definitely yeah. Like, holy crap, is this movie beautiful? Like, yeah. it looks better. I I still can't fathom how it's 15 years old, and yet it looks better than like 60 percent of modern Marvel movies. Like Black mm-hmm. Widow and Thor: Love and Thunder, I think, didn't have such great CGI moments. And like, how how did we get to that? If 15 years ago, we were having 10,000 moving parts of a robot. Mm. You know, and you it looks so real. Like, still to yeah. this day, in my opinion, the, every single Transformers film looks so real. It's true, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah it's definitely like, true. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, like, there are some films that, you know, you could see them, and it's like, yeah, well, you can tell. You, if you really watch, you know, you can tell it's fake. Yeah. Like, I but, don't know, for example, maybe Iron Man 1. I suppose. 
Yeah, but, but you know what? Well, you know why that so many people see that, uh, or why why it's still. I mean, I I've seen when I got the four K, I was kind of worried. Eh, could you maybe see that it started to age? Um, but you re- even on the four K, you can really it still looks so great in the CGI because normally four K is very very unforgiving with bad CGI. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but you really can't tell. It still looks so great, even though it's, again, 15 years now. But I think what's probably the biggest factor why Marvel movies these days, most of them look worse, um, is because Marvel does ev- almost everything with a green screen and no practical effects. Mm, and true. Michael Bay literally, for example, taking 07, went up to the highway and made this bus explode. Yeah. yeah. Also, you know, it had like a real bumblebee like mo- like um, true true a statue i guess you could call it or, or dummy yeah like yeah, yeah. it had an actual bomb we made it had also props for like the bodies of like blackout and yeah. and and the other decepticons but still you know if if you look at for example the the arrival to earth scene optimus transformation it's seamless and it considering amazing, that yeah. stuff that was coming you know, before uh, 07, which was like The Rock as the Scorpion King, which is mm-hmm. really bad CGI. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, you see Transformers and it's like, what? Yeah. Well, that's like, exactly, that's what yeah. I mean. Because, like, these felt like some, like, like, just like the best examples, obviously. 07, that's the oldest film. But, like, those, like, the film's like 15 years old now, and the CGI still holds up really well. Like it's mm-hmm. really good, and like you said that about really all the films. Like, that's a love. Like yeah. one of the things I love about them is just the CGI is so good, and you think about the amount of detail and time and everything that's put into the models and like everything. It's like yep. it's just incredible. Yeah, you because but that's because you can say what you want about Michael Bay, and you can hate about him whatever you want, but the guy knows his visuals. He really yeah, does. Oh yeah. He, yeah. he has an eye for that and for he has an eye for creating nice shots and he has an eye for knowing how to you like he understands cgi he knows and he said that even in some behind the scenes he said cgi is, a, is an additional tool to make stuff great but it's not something that replaces practical stuff exactly yeah. that's exactly in, in my opinion what even helps that like the fact that michael bay is, has such, such a good eye for detail is even the f- thing that most people give him like uh, a hard time for it which was the fact that he filmed commercials so you know yeah. he knows how to sell a product and he also knows how to sell believable like cgi in my, mm-hmm. because uh there's a lot of of you know like uh, uh behind the scenes footage where michael bay wanted to avoid um what, what you know because of course megatron turns into a gun in G1. We all know that. Mm. Sun wave turns into a cassette and that's called mass shifting and it's something that, you know, it's in the lore. And Michael Bay wanted to avoid mass shifting at all costs. Yeah. So that's why for example, Jazz is shorter than Bumblebee, you know, that's why uh, Megatron is kind of, you know, taller than than Prime yeah. and stuff like that. You know why Starscream supposedly is so huge? Because he wanted to make it real. He wanted to f- mm. make it feel like this robot could come out of this truck. And because he wanted to avoid mass shifting. So yeah. there was a really long period of time for like artistic choice. Also, you know, designs. They wanted to it went they wanted it to feel alien, but Michael Bay, you know, wanted also t- to make them feel powerful. So that's also why, you know, they're kind of beefy. Um, mm. A decision also that was made for the for the scale of the Transformers, you know, to make them feel also bigger, was to deepen their voices, which well that was kind of lost throughout the rest of the films. Yeah. But mm. you know, there's that factor. You know, Peter Cullen's voice is way deeper than usual, and you know that's because he's like I don't know, like twenty feet tall. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, you know, there was sense, a load so. of uh, Michael Bay was very hands on with yeah. with O Seven, and it came out well. And you know he was very hands off with the last yeah. night, and we know how that came out. So yeah. I mean, a lot of people give yeah. Michael Bay hate 
for yeah, I mean, just as an example, I mean, the 07 movie even took some of his own salary and used it for the movie to make it better. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? I didn't, so, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, he did that. Damn. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think he, he even did that for, for the second one, because I remember there's a behind-the-scenes moment where <laughs> it's so funny because it's fully bare. I can imagine that. He, he said, like, he's sitting in his private jet, like, talking to the camera, and he's explaining, like, I just called Paramount, ILM, and all the studios and told them we're, we're effed. <laughs> <laughs> and then... He, uh, and then he like he he went he, like he said he walked up to ILM and he's like take take some of my money just make it better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And you know so, it's funny. There's a certain factor that I think it's I don't know it's pretty interesting about the O seven film, which is that well we all know that RC you know was originally supposed to be included yeah. in the Autobot cast. Yeah. Um. But you know, every also everyone knows that Transformers One was supposed to be you know like a one and done. That's why mm -hmm. it's only like Transformers and like the Transformers are maybe something more teasing to to a sequel. That's also why you know Megatron dies at the end. A lot of yeah. the Decepti most of the Decepticons die. Barricade will kind of disappears, but you know that's so not here nor there. Yeah. Um, what's very interesting, in my opinion, that even though Transformers 1 was supposed to be a one and done, they still didn't include Shockwave and Soundwave. And Soundwave was, fun fact, actually supposed to be Blackout. Like, Blackout wasn't even supposed to exist. There, he oh, was, It was supposed to be Soundwave. Oh. oh and and to, to me, that's very interesting because... I don't know, I just find it interesting that one of the most iconic legacy characters of, you know, Transformers history, even one of the first ones to be included in, into, like, the Hall of, the Transformers Hall of Fame, which was Soundwave, was scrapped from, from the project and replaced by an original character. And I remember that there was a reason on why they did that, but I can't remember right now. Yeah, I don't know too, yeah. But it's funny never I, to be honest, I couldn't imagine Blackout as sound, but, but yeah. Yeah, like I'm not complaining at all for having a Blackout instead of Soundwave, to be honest. Because Blackout, like, especially with that beginning scene, with like at the military, eh, military base and stuff, like, that's just iconic mm -hmm. now. Like, that's just like a yeah, really iconic scene. Yeah. And like, I couldn't imagine that just be like, what, Soundwave being a helicopter? It's like, I don't know, man. It's weird, yeah. Like, it is you know, weird to think about. But, you know, the fun fact about that is that even though Soundwave was, like, yeah, Soundwave was cut from the from the film, but not only that, he was split into two. Originally, we wouldn't even, we wouldn't have had either Blackout or, nor Barricade. Oh, really? That okay. was supposed to be all Soundwave, 100% oh, Soundwave. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Damn. Well, then in that case, thank God, it was it was the other two. <laughs> yeah, awesome. I mean, like, that could, could you imagine that instead of Blackout and Barricade being in there, it's just Soundwave. So that, like, damn. Yeah, I think it would have made it worse. Yeah. Like, would he been? Would he, would he, he must. He would have had to been like a triple changer or like something. Because if like yeah, probably yeah. If he was like if he, if he's. You know, say if they were gonna keep him like as like a helicopter or some form of helicopter, then have him be like, a police car, like you mm -hmm. he would have had to have been a you know a triple changer of some sort. Hmm. Yeah, maybe that's also why they decided against it. Who knows? Uh, and I mean, now that I think about it, about that whole thing with him being not just blackout but also barricade, that kind of makes me wonder if that's why barricade is the one who has frenzy in that film. Because Frenzy is, is supposed to be, you know, oh, sound that was interesting. Minion. Yeah, so, that, that is actually the reason why why Frenzy is like a minion of Barricade, and also you know why Blackout has Scorponok. Uh, they both were originally supposed to be Soundwave minions. Yeah, that I makes see. Uh, okay. It's all kind of makes sense. It's all coming together. It's all coming. Together. Yeah, it's all coming together. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Huh. Tax points out then. But yeah, I mean, I think, like, how we can sum it up the best is, I think, 
you you might think about the baby versus Woody one, but you can we can all agree that O seven, even though it's a flawed movie, definitely. I mean, calling something perfect is, in my opinion, uh, very difficult anyway. Because what is perfect, right? Yeah. Um. But but yeah, it it definitely has its flaws, some bigger than not. Um. But I think it is definitely something you can call an objectively good movie. Even great, I would say. Yeah, well, I mean, because like there's there's way worse films out there. Like, oh, like, yeah, definitely. And, like, you, and like you said, David, like it's not perfect, but like it's not bad. You know, yeah. it's not like a bad Lord film. Lord. Like it has faults, but like most other films do. But like you know, it has faults, but it's not a bad film. There's way worse films that came out both before and after it. Mm-hmm. So you know, yeah. it's you know, well, I guess, exactly. You know, basically, it's just well, yeah, yeah, it has its flaws. It's still a good movie, objectively. You know. So yeah, perfect. And one more question I have for you guys regarding O Seven, which I'm really interested to know. Okay. Did one of you have an O Seven toy? Oh, definitely. I yeah. I don't think so. I, I think def- well, I think I missed the whole O um, Seven toy line. I'm pretty sure at least. Oh no! Okay. I, uh, I definitely, I can't. I'm just like I'm trying to think back at some of the figures. Um, I know I had all, at least an Optimus Prime fig figure. I know I had oh, nice. Bumblebee figure. I know I had. There's like there was like this two pack with um, long arm as like the the tow truck oh, and Bumblebee hey. like that little like non transforming Bumblebee with his legs gone. I had that. Mm-hmm. Um, there's probably I think I had like a Jazz, but I don't know if that was actually I think that was just a repaint and it was actually like smoke screen or something. I don't know if that was from mm-hmm. the first movie or not, if that was like just for a second. I can't remember what it was from. It was basically Jazz's mold but just repainted and I think it was smoke screen, not jazz, but I had that mm-hmm. figure. Um now there was this one that I totally forgot I had until like a couple weeks ago. And I don't know if it's from the first or second film. I wanna say it might be from the second one, so this might not count. But it's still really cool, and it still works surprisingly. Is it's um a remote control uh Optimus Prime truck that I oh, had? Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah, and like, and I thought, okay, yeah, there's no way this works after you know ten, fifteen years. You know, because mm. I pulled it out of a box from one end because I still I hadn't emptied it out since we moved last year. You know, I probably you know remembered it last year when I was moving stuff. And I totally forgot about it again. And I was going through myself, and I found it. I'm like, okay, there's no way this still works. And then I pulled it out, and it, like, it's it, it's a little like can be a little bit unresponsive at times, but it, it still works really good. Nice. Like, the battery isn't dead. Awesome. It's you know, it still makes all the sound effects. It gets really cool. But like I said, I just don't know if it's from the first or second film, but I just thought I mentioned it mm. anyway. But but no, I definitely mm. had figures from the. Uh, the first film, I think I had, I might have had a blackout toy. I don't know. I had. A, I, I mean, oh, okay. I'm just trying to remember them all. But no, I definitely had some figures though. Wow. Okay. You definitely have a lot more than I have. Yeah. Oh. I also did uh, a little research, and the only yeah. toy that I had from the original 07 film was a Voyager Optimus Prime. The rest uh, is all from Dark of the Moon. Oh, I mean, damn. sorry, Revenge of the Fallen. Damn. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean. <laughs> I, my summary is very quick of what I had from 07 because it's literally one toy. Um, <laughs> and that is, I think also it might be, and it, it is my first Transformers toy I ever gotten. That was, um, it's a Starscream toy, but it's not uh. a Voyager nor anything. It's one of these very, very simple changes. You literally had like, I think, five to six steps and then it was done. No, no, less five or four. Oh, yeah. yeah. And to be honest, I have it somewhere still. And it, it, even though it was such a simple changer, it was it still looked pretty nice. To be honest. Yeah, I think I and had that, some of those too. I know I I know I had a blackout one. I know that for sure. I had a blackout one. It's like a really small figure. And it didn't take too many yeah. steps to complete. Um, like I said, some of the figures I can't remember if they're from the first or second. Like I know the blackout was definitely from the first mm-hmm. movie. I I'm pretty sure yeah. I had Optimus Prime. I just can't remember if he was from the first or second movie or not. Mm-hmm. But but no, like because like I literally have a whole box like because like I said a couple weeks ago when I found that remote control Optimus that I had. 
Mm. I have a bunch yeah. of figures that I went through, and, like, if I could, I just, like, I wish I could go through it right now without causing a mess and <laughs> taking it, everything, <laughs> everything out and having to put it back in, but, like, if I could, I'd, I'd look in there and just see, because I, I know I have a, de- a, a decent amount of figures from the first movie, even. I just yeah. can't remember them all. I mean, that's very nice. Again, I sadly, yeah, uh, we, same as Martini, I really started getting into the toys with Revenge of the Fall there. Yeah. Hmm, yeah. Like, that's where I li- really consciously was like, I need this Voyager and I want this and this. I remember getting Voyager Starscream was such a big thing for me back then. Oh, I got the, like, f- fast action battler one from Revenge of the Fallen. It was really cool. <sighs> Although just, the, like, spring loaded yeah. arm broke on me. Oh, damn. So <laughs> I had a forest battle accurate Starscream. <laughs> Perfect. See, you always have to find positives and negatives. <laughs> yep. Also, coming back to the the original thing I said about Blackout and, and Barricade, mm-hmm. here's the original Blackout concept art. Now, you tell me who that looks like. I'm pretty sure you'll be able to notice from the color and the shape of the head. Yeah, this is looking like Soundwave, the head especially, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was where when they still were going for kind of like a G1 updated-ish aesthetic mm. after they decided to, you know, well, drop it and, and go full, full on, um, what's it called? Alien. Uh, yeah, probably Michael Bay. I, I know Michael Bay was a big part in it because he was like, nah, I, I don't want to have toy designs. Mm-hmm. G- probably G- G1 fans will be really pissed off by that, but... <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Yeah. It's not yeah, it's not like Michael Bay cared. <laughs> True also. So yeah, with regards to what other people thought. Um but yeah, it, in some parts that was really good, I mean, because otherwise we probably wouldn't have gotten these designs, which I mean, since I, I get it, so if you were if you if you grew up in the G one times, because there we all know this big debate which designs are better, right? Mm-hmm. which is pretty stupid in my opinion because I think it really depends on what you grew up with if you grew up with G1 obviously this will be the design you really are attached to a lot and the same mm-hmm. goes with us with the Bavers because we were, we grew up with the Bavers uh, if I see G1 Optimus yes it's nice I, I like it but my Optimus is Bavers Optimus true the thing is for me it's kind of a, f- a philosophy of this character has, you know, an iconic look. Mm. And there's things that need to be updated for that, you know, iconic look. So this apply this in my opinion is like the Marvel philosophy. Where you have, mm-hmm. for example, Iron Man. If you look at comic Iron Man, it's very yellow, it's very vibrant. Um the the mask kind of looks weird, you know. So for the movies, mm-hmm. they it had to be like more tech if I, you know, more modern, instead of yellow, you know, it could have gold or like a bronze. Yep. And, you know, instead of straight red, it, it, it it's like a metallic red, you know, because it has to be believable. It has to look like it mm-hmm. fits into the world of, the world, of yeah. its universe. You know, also th- same thing for Captain America. If you look at the first movie, you see the iconic comic book outfit with, with you know, yep. the wing on the ears and stuff like that. And it looks stupid. And then you <laughs> take a look at the more like battle, like soldier ish costume, which and looks works, badass. Yeah. yeah. It always so, in my opinion, the time, that's yeah. the, the philosophy they, that, that applied, that was applied for, for Transformers. They yeah. decided to make it a little more realistic than they decided, like, than accurate. So they kind of went a little bit beyond, uh, like, what was supposed to to be. But in my opinion, it works. Would a hypothetical 07 movie work with the designs we got in Bumblebee? Probably. But in my opinion, for what we got, it's it's perfect. And I, I yep. wouldn't change a thing. Exactly, yeah. I agree. And... Yeah, as you said, it like creating designs. It always depends on the, the the setting that you want to put your characters in, and it makes sense, as you said, to if you have if you want to place them in the real world, that you make sense that they look as real as possible. Yeah, so mm-hmm. I agree. I fully agree with those the decisions that they made. 
And it's also more creative, right? Because say what you want about like all, you know, Kingdom and, uh, you know, whatever, all the, all the new stuff, even the Bumblebee movie. Yes, I like the Bumblebee designs, really, but the, I mean, the Bayverse designs are still way more creative, you know? Mm. Just their, their own design almost, right? Mm. They they of course take reference to character colors and design, but they're really their own designs. Like right. the others are more just you know based off G one heavily, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that's something that Hasbro should do more these days. Again, is try to take <laughs> risks and not just bang on G one, because I think that could mm-hmm. backfire. Because after because people at some point we'll get tired of that tired of it exactly yeah in my yeah. opinion that's also what not only kept you know the the what in my opinion what kept the 2000 fresh was also the great variety of designs mm-hmm. because while you know bavers animated cybertron armada none of those designs look anything similar but they all share this like the features that define Optimus Prime, which is, you know, the ears, the blue, the red, the face mask, you know, that stuff that, that you know, defines Optimus and you cannot really separate yourself from. It's yeah. In my opinion, it also applies for Iron Man. We see a bunch of different costumes, well, not costumes, suits, a bunch of suits throughout the, the films, but they all share the, the same detail with, like, the arc reactor on the chest, kind of the, the almost all the body is red except for you know the faceplate which is also this like gold you know the yeah. the like reactors on the hands those traits that iron man shares throughout all the movies is you know his defining features same with spider-man it, it has to have you know like the the eyes the the spider pattern yeah you know and they can take risk with that change a few things but still make it original. Uh, in my opinion, every character should have that. Well, yep. the Bavers characters, some of them didn't. It's true, you know, Ratchet kind of has nothing to do with the original one. It's not even an ambulance. Mm-hmm. It's like a fire rescue vehicle. You know, the color scheme is different. Same for Ironhide. Same yep. for Starscream, except for the fact that, you know, they're both planes. Um, and, and especially the biggest one affected by this is Megatron. You know, mm-hmm. he doesn't have the bucket helmet... He, he isn't a gun, and he doesn't even have the the arm cannon. But yeah. is it a still a good design? Yes. Definitely, it fits yeah. the, the aesthetic of the series. It looks menacing as hell. Mm. And if you take a look at what we had before, it's even closer to G1 than, than that. It, you know? Yeah. It, Armada Megatron didn't look anything like the original. <laughs> Energon Megatron True. didn't look anything like the original. Cybertron Megatron didn't look anything like the original. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know it, it was the closest thing we had at that time to G1 everything was the closest thing we had to G1 and the other series Bumblebee didn't even exist yeah yeah. same for you know well Ironhide it, it, ha- it was an Energon but he was even a further cry from the uh, he was like the Kid Apu character he was like a kid dead and that has nothing to do with G1 Ironhide but then you look at the Babers and his personality is very similar. You know, he's very tough. He's kind of grumpy. In in yeah. my opinion, people just complain for complaining, but they don't analyze so, the yeah. context true, within, yeah. you know, the the film's release. The film's oh, production. Sure. And now that you make that like comparison with like what was it? The, I don't know what, what was it the what was it like Cyberverse or like Armor? It was like the, the Iron High that's like the Kid Appeal version. Energon. Energon, yeah. thank you, yeah. And, like, I didn't, I totally forgot about that, but, like, how can people, like, not give any complaints about that and say, oh, yeah, you know, it's fine, but then they complain about the Baver Siren High, but that still has, like, the same personality and, like, you know, or the, you know, that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. It's, like, and, like, I think, like you said, people definitely just complain for, like, complaining sake. It's, you know, I feel like, I feel like it's just, uh it gets kind of annoying sometimes, but... yeah. It does get kind of annoying. G1 fans or G1 purists are sometimes a pain. But yeah. again, there are a lot of things that most of the um, other cartoons, you know, previous 
it, like didn't nail at all. There are some things, of course, that they had an advantage over the the Beavers, in my opinion. The th probably I'd say maybe Starscream. He was similar, more like similar to G One than than the Starscream that we got in, in in the Beavers. But in my opinion, what makes everyone complain the most of of the the Beavers is not necessarily the fact that it doesn't look G One. But that we had something that looked very much G1, which was animated. Yeah. And that wasn't what we were seeing on the big screen. In my opinion, maybe I'm wrong, but in my opinion, if animated had been released later, say maybe 2010, um, the Beavers designs wouldn't get as much hate as they do. Yeah, it's definitely possible that you say it. And like, and like I don't mean I don't hate G one in any capacity, but like what I do kind of like is like is because Hasbro seems to really like to milk stuff like they milk G one like they're milking like you know Beast Wars and all that. Yeah. But like, because they don't want to create original stuff, right? Because of the Bayverse, now they're scared to, so they just stick with like G one and now Beast Wars and stuff. Mm -hmm. But like, why can't they do something like? Um, like Transformers Prime, like you know, for example, like Prime, he's kind of like a mixture of G One and the Bavers, and, and it the works Bavers, really yeah. well. Like, it works really well. His design's great. Like, why can't they do something like that? Like, you know, make your own kind of thing. If you want to take some inspiration, okay, you know, that's fine. Like, you make him look a little bit, but like, make your like make something different. Like, don't be afraid to experiment. You know. You know that's also interesting that you mentioned Transformers Prime because if you look at RC, she doesn't look. It anything like the g1 counterpart oh yeah. so you know what's up with that true, yeah. right yeah, why does true, yeah. why, why why don't i see any hate for uh transformers prime rc or maybe for transformers prime bulkhead you know because in spirit he is kind of like hound yeah but yeah. he's not you know he's big he's like round and chubby and his personality is also very different from g1 hound so oh, yeah. you know what's up with that yeah yeah, yeah i mean yeah there, there, there will always be people who aren't satisfied and think you know that the mm. designs you re there, there are so many people i think that just that have a very hard time with mm, accepting or being able to welcome new fresh designs yeah and that is something or or new takes because it doesn't matter what you what franchise you go to. It doesn't even need to be Transformers, right? If you think about Star Wars is a big example. I think the mm -hmm. Star Wars fandom has a very, very hard time accepting new, fresh ideas. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, I mean, this might be a hot take. Maybe I'll even get shit from you guys, but I don't know. <laughs> Let's just go for it. Because um, I think... Um, I mean, I don't like The Last Jedi, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. But f I can accept or respect things it tried to do. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. I mean, there, there are parts I really don't like, but there are parts where I'm like, I, I can get where, what he's trying to do. Like the whole mm -hmm. stuff with Let the Past Die and stuff. I, I kind of get it. But, you know, people just go in like, no, this can't be. Star Wars always was like that. Yeah, but if you keep continuing have something be the same the whole time it doesn't matter if it's transformers with g1 or with star wars at one point it'll get boring and repetitive mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and i do and that's feel when like, no one I mean, cares anymore yeah and like i mean this is kind of going off a little bit off topic but this is just like about like the, the sequel trilogy real quick real quick like i feel mm -hmm. like all like because obviously it's pretty ill received as we all know but like yeah. i feel i almost feel like a bit of that um, like of how like it went down and everything, especially with like um, what was it the uh the the oh my god uh the rise of Skywalker, mm -hmm. um, I feel like that was almost kind of the fault of the fans because you know just uh, and I'll just I'll explain, like you know because um you know the was it uh the Force Awakens comes out people will say it's too similar to a New Hope. So then they try to change it up and make something different with uh, Last Jedi. Jedi. People yeah. say and it's too different. It. So people say it's too different. Mm -hmm. So then they try to, you know, obviously, they, then they try to, I don't know, they try to mix it. They, they try to, like, you know, they bring uh, 
help a team back and all this kind of stuff. They're trying to make the fans happy, and then yeah. they still aren't happy with it. So I almost and, feel like, it, in to some capacity, it's the fans' fault. To in my opinion, all that went down. the rise of Skywalker was 100% the fans' fault. Like, yeah. for, because I think The Force Awakens was really good. I also yeah. like yeah. The Last Jedi. I feel the biggest point of controversy in The Last Jedi is what they did with Luke. You know, mm-hmm. how they yeah. reforged his personality. Yeah. In my opinion, it works. You know, it throughout the film... You can clearly tell that he did something wrong. He repeated the errors of the past. And that worked as a character arc. Luke's character arc is so good. But, you know, since it was different from the Luke that we all know, the, the they complained, and then we got the most cliche, boring-ass finale to a, a ver- what I thought was a very good, well, duology at the time, which was mm-hmm. The Rise of Skywalker. You know, they brought up Palpatine, it didn't make any sense. You know, Ray, like, was a Palpatine. You know, why? Why do they have to have a connection to something that came before? Why does it have to be like a full circle thing? You know, why couldn't it be something else? I would have loved for Ray to be a nobody. That would have been so cool. Well, that's like... Well, yeah, that's the thing. They, they tried to do that, and then all the fans were like mad because their theories weren't correct. So then, the, like in the Rise of Skywalker, I don't know exactly the line, but like I was like, "Yeah, your parents were nothing, but your gr- your gr- your grandparent, your grandfather, you know, he's Palpatine." It's like, oh my god, you know, he actually, she, you know, she's a Palpatine, but it's like, they they why everyone yeah, had their even theories. Make any sense. Like, oh, he's Obi Wan. She's Obi Wan's kid. Oh, she's you know so and so's kid. But then she ends up being a nobody, and then all the fans are pissed because their th- theories weren't correct. Yeah. <laughs> like, it just annoys me so much sometimes when I think about it. <laughs> yeah, Star Wars fans are annoying. Like I said, Everyone, I d- I d- every fandom has its annoying bits, yeah. sadly. Like I said, I didn't mean to drag us into a Star Wars Into talk. a Star just, Wars video. I just wanted to mention <laughs> instead it of, because... Uh, instead of the 15th anniversary of 07, <laughs> it's a debate on whether the, the sequels are bad or not. <laughs> but that's fine because oh, no. it has a point that again goes back to Transformers because we have we see the same thing here as well, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, right. With 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 Baber, so many p uh, so there, there. Thankfully, I think with Transformers, it's not as bad. Yeah, but I, I, there's definitely a part of the fandom that looks down on Baber's fans. Oh yeah, yeah and, definitely. And um, the thing is, what I I, I just don't get that because. Yeah, I, ju- I just don't. Again, it's a big problem with just trying. And, and with those fans, they just want everything to stay the same, be always the same. And yeah, mm-hmm. see what we get now. Yeah, that's true. That that I also feel that that is a very, like I I don't get it. Like, like the like the typical. Oh, you like the Bavers? Well, it's not G one, so then it sucks. It, what what does it matter? We both like robots that turn into cars. Yeah, exactly. Deal with it. It's the same yeah. thing, dude. <laughs> exactly. It's not different just because the truck has f- one has flames and the other one doesn't. Yeah, right. It, it's crazy how mad people can get over flames. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, yeah. But anyways, I mean that is something. Yeah. So I think that's something the fandom should think think about and really grateful that Michael Bay did it and changed it up because we kind of feel it already how it feels when Hasbro just does the same stuff over and over and over again we kind of feel oh, it yeah. a bit. So, like... and, and that's what I'm kind of hoping with Rise of the Beast that it's not the same again again yeah Hopefully, yeah I mean it'll definitely design wise be very inspired but you want to uh, since it's kind of Bumblebee style as far as I know yeah, oh, you yeah. know, there's, in my opinion, there's a thin line with, like, copying something mm. that was already done before and kind of twisting it in into something else, in my opinion. Like, in my perfect example is that while I like the new G1-ish direction that Rise of the Beast is taking, I don't want it to be exactly like g1 like if eventually down the line you know we get unicron and for example megatron 
turns into Unicron, uh, like turns into Galvatron the exact same way as he did in G1, I'm gonna be pissed. Like it has to have something yeah. else, you know. It doesn't need yeah. to be like, oh, they meet, you know, Unicron. You know, Megatron is beaten up, so Unicron has to, you know, reformat him and like takes advantage. You know, there there's yeah. new things added to the franchise since '86. Exactly. There's Dark Energon. There's, you know, the Primus, the 13th Primus. There's so much thing you could do, you know. It is, is it the same Destiny? Yes. But the road to it could be so much more interesting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, for sure. And I think that the big, the big, the big overarching topic is take risks. I know, mm. I know companies yeah. don't like to take risks. We all know that. But, uh, but it's just... For example, give me give me a Cybertron a show before the war, leading to the war. Yeah, I'd be yes. up for that. Oh yeah, for, for sure. Example. And like, cause that's like the thing that sucks is like, cause since like, I don't know how they got this from you know, but like, cause since like the Bavers failed and they tried to be so different, they're like, I guess they're just like, oh yeah, you know, okay, we have to just do G one stuff to please the fans. Not all mm. the fans want to just see G one completely yeah and exactly. like i mean and, the, and those fans i don't know why they only want to see g1 stuff like i'm like if you like g1 okay you know that's fine like you don't you know yeah, no sure. one's saying you don't have to not like g1 but i want some variety take risks try some different stuff with these stories and characters etc etc as long as it works like don't just do the same stuff over and over and over again yeah. mm-hmm you know, but who knows what will happen? Well, we can, we can hope that they, you know, but we don't know what's going to happen going forward with Transformers. But, you know. True. I mean, the good thing is I heard that, like, in Rise of the Beast, they're trying to please, like, all of them. Like, all of us. Yeah. <laughs> so well, that's what I mean, because, like, because even though, like, for example, like, the designs in, like, Bumblebee and, like, obviously going to Rise of the Beasts, like, they're, like... They're G one ish, but they're more like modern. And obviously, like I, I mm. love the Bayverse designs. Like at least most of them. Yeah, anyway. exactly. Some are on, you know, some are, you know, but you know, um, but like I like how like they they're a G one, but they're modernized and they do they look good. You know, that's I like I like the designs yeah. that they went with. And you know, so and, like and there that, are even like some Bayverse touches here and there. Yeah, like you know, even though it's like you know, obviously very G one inspired, like it's still you know it it's modernized and it's changed up a bit. So even though it's G one, like you know, it's obviously very G one inspired, it still looks good. Like you know, it's not yeah. no not bad designs at all. And obviously, Bumblebee has his kind of you know his old Camaro look. So like yeah, you know, there's obviously nice, that yeah. and stuff, and you know, but but yeah, mm. yeah, like. I, for example, why couldn't be why couldn't we be more like for example DC fandom? Like the fact that we're going so much out of our way to respect a director's you know vision, um, or more like yeah. Marvel, who we appreciate that they're twisting you know storylines from the comics, but in in different ways. You know, if we don't like something, mm -hmm. we say it. Yeah, but we don't bash on it like it's freaking yeah. cancer. We don't. Like, yeah, that's what I hate with some fans. Like, some fans get, like, they, like, death threats, and they get really, like, yeah, you know, so super over bad. just fictional stuff. It's like, you can like stuff, but don't send death threats to these people. Just calm down a bit, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, some, I hate exactly. some fans. Like, it just so, like, they get so, I don't even know what the word would be for. They just, they get so over, like, they, they overreact, and they get so, you know, it's, oh my god. It's, you know. Yeah, and then, you so, obviously so, you have, yeah, yeah. And you have like the G one fans, like and obviously you not know, all all are like bad, you know, but some are obviously they just hate anything to do with Bayverse. And if you like Bayverse, then you're like the worst per person on the planet, mm -hmm. you know, because you like something they don't. You like something that's you know too different. <laughs> yeah, you know. But then again, that's that's with that exists everywhere in every franchise yeah. and every so yeah. And honestly, for some, I think for some franchises, just like for Star Wars, I think it can be one of the most toxic fan bases that I've oh, sure, seen yeah. and heard of. Like, like every every fan base has like their toxic parts, but I think definitely Star Wars is definitely with, like one of the worst, at least in yeah. my opinion. Anyway, just from like what I, I've seen, I and have heard, to it's, agree. It's oh my god, it, it can get really bad. Like yeah, I feel yeah. like <laughs> it's oh my, I don't even know. 
It's like yeah, even but... sad to see that Star Wars can't take as much risks as they want. And uh, I initially, I have to admit that I, you know, when I watched like Rogue One, I was like, oh, why aren't we talking more about Jedi stuff? Yeah. But then, you yeah. know, I, I appreciated Rogue One for what it was. And, you mm -hmm. know, we need to have more stuff like this in Star Wars. Like something that strays off of the norm. You know, I want spin-offs. Yeah. I want stories that I haven't seen. I don't want just a repeating circle of yeah, yeah. there's this Jedi who, you know, rose above the rest and went into the dark side and funded a new Jedi and saved everyone. Oh, wait, he also did the same thing and the rest and repeat. You know, I don't want that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want an overpowered Jedi who's going to defeat like the 1500 reincarnation of Palpatine. Yeah. 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 Give me yeah, new stuff. That, yeah. Exactly. So, overall topic: give us new stuff, take risks. Exactly. Yeah. Take, <laughs> yeah, take lessons. Take lessons. Please, you Hasbro. Learn from... If you're listening yeah. to us for whatever reason. And also please. Disney, give more Disney. freedom exactly. to Star Wars. Yes, <laughs> yes please, Disney. <laughs> give, give, uh, give, uh, take lessons from 07 in that regard. Yes. Oh yeah. Give me Duel of the Fates. I don't want Rise of the Skywalker to be legit. I want Duel of the Fates. Yeah, it would be <laughs> interesting. Definitely sounded very nice what I heard. I mean, I don't, I, I don't know. I, even if you didn't, uh, we already know that you didn't have a plan to do with the side characters. Take a little bit of time. Think about it. I know you can do, if you have to extend it just a little bit more to give us something that's decent and that ties everything up in a neat bow, do it. Yeah. Better take time, make it good, than rush it, yeah. We'll be yeah. better at the exactly, end and that is why. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> All right, that is why Rise of Unicron is delayed till twenty thirty, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're delaying it until uh, uh, the three thousand. We're gonna exactly. delay it. See you guys next. I don't know how no, long that even is, but see you guys later. Gonna, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna delay it. We're gonna pressure us, <laughs> bro. We're gonna be like we delay it till Michael Bay comes back. <laughs> yeah, we, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna boy we're gonna boycott. We want Michael Bay to come back produce uh, <laughs> uh, the the official Transformers Rise Unicron. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. See you guys for the 100th anniversary of um, 07 <laughs> when we finally release the film. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <clears throat> but yeah, so I think that is a nice way to wrap up here. Um, I think what is there to say? We we talked extensively about this O seven and the Bayverse fandom and sprinkled in some some Star Wars toxicity. Yeah, I only had like <laughs> one other thing. It was gonna be a quick question for you guys because I didn't even think sure. about it earlier. I was just kind of sure. curious because I mean I don't know. I'm guessing you guys have probably seen it, but um, have either of you guys? Because it's only for pre order right now, or uh, it was anyway. I'm assuming it's probably still. For I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, it was the. I think it was the Transformers Studio Series Transformers movie fifteenth anniversary multi pack. That was a that was a mouthful. But you guys know yeah. what I mean. The multi pack for the Studio Series from the Autobots from the first one. With film. every have you guys, Autobot. Yeah, have yes. any of you guys pre ordered that? I just I'm just like here. I'm just curious. I was legit mad because it was supposedly supposed to come out in December, but suddenly Amazon popped in a pre order. Mm. And I have absolutely zero dollars in my pocket. I was gonna <laughs> save up. I was going to do uh, something smart, get a job, you know, uh, save $100 mm -hmm. to, to as soon as the pre-order came out, I can buy it. But no, Hasbro released, uh, decided to release it now and fuck me over. And then yeah. I'm going to go on eBay. And guess what? It's going to be $300. <laughs> yeah. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Lots of people do. They buy them. They sell it for more. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Scalpers are the best people in the world, man. Oh, yeah, man. definitely. Did you? No, but have you got. Did you get it, David? Yeah, I actually pre-ordered it. Yeah. <gasps> I'm, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking pre lucky, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Could you pre-order a second one, and I'll pay it to you, no cap. <laughs> of course, yeah. But well, Marty, I'm sorry to tell you, but um, <clears throat> <laughs> um, well, I mean, I didn't pre-order it, but my dad pre-ordered it for my for Christmas. It's my only oh, one of my only Christmas gifts. But yeah, my dad pre-ordered <sighs> it for, for Christmas, so I'm getting it for Christmas. <laughs> you two guys are <laughs> so lucky. Don't, Martini, yeah, I mean, don't, I... Martini, can I give you the money somehow? Can I give you PayPal? 
I mean, <laughs> you could. I guess that would be pretty nice and a nice it gesture doesn't... to end the video. <laughs> I mean... Can I even still buy it? Is it even still there? I have I no idea. Know. It is. I think I, I got. Oh my god! It it's still alive. <laughs> see, this is this is this is the Transformers fandom. We are the guys. <laughs> exactly. You don't see G one people buying figures for each other. Just <laughs> us Bayverse chats. See? See, G1, for the hardcore G1 fans, this is what it is all about. Exactly. <laughs> each other. Oh, they look so good, dude. I I'm, really, I'm going to start crying uh, again. Am I, am, I, am I imagining it or do they have better paint job? I At least Jazz, Ratchet. I, uh, Jazz and Ratchet do. Uh, Optimus and Ironhide don't. Bumblebee has a new, has like the Revenge of the Moonling. Uh, ah. Revenge of the Fallen paint job with a different head and Optimus instead of having the gun that he had with the original release has blades. I think they should have gave him a blade and a sword, but you know, I think it's me because he used a blade and a sword in the film, but I don't mm. know. It's whatever. It doesn't matter, but you know. But I'm happy. But... I, I I love my two Revenge of the Fallen and the John Blades. <laughs> yeah. I think I don't know, I think I have the Dark of the Moon Optimus, but I don't have I don't have any of like those like I don't have any of the like the O seven figures, so that's why I was like I saw that I'm like right. okay, so I was probably gonna buy yeah. it, and then like I told my dad about, it, and he's like, well, do you want it for Christmas? I'm like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. <laughs> the, thing, so, the cool thing about it is that it, there was like some mistakes that, for example, if you look at um, for because I thought it was cool that Bumblebee, you know, when he came out in his Camaro normal mode, you know, he had a mask, but then the Revenge of the Fallen one also had a mask. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you know now this one doesn't. So, you know, if you buy this one, you have a bumblebee that doesn't have a mask, and one that does mm. have a mask, and that makes cool, them eh? kind of unique. Yeah. Yep. I mean, the the good thing is, um, it's same. It's the same situation here with me. I I also do not have any O seven Studio Series or bots, so for yeah. me that's perfect, right? Because the only mm -hmm. thing Got close is I I had the Dark of the Moon Optimus, and that was basically it. So yeah. I don't I didn't have any of those seven figures. So like I saw that I'm like hmm, yeah um kind mm -hmm. kind of want Ooh. that I can't lie. <laughs> yeah, it was the same with me. I looked at it when like Fire Brothers posted it in our chat, and I'm like, ah, yeah, I I'm buying it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and if you look also, you know, Jazz, Ratchet, Iron High, they were s uh, Optimus. Literally all of them except for Bumblebee, they were gone from the market. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but 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 if there's one thing, my my budget for giving Hasbro money is now done because now I've 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 bought the whole bundle. I've pre-ordered Galvatron and Sideway, oh. so it's oh, done. Oh jeez, damn. Yeah, I would just pre-order yeah. the bundle. I don't have that much money, but I will on October. But for <laughs> now, see. I don't. So Hasbro, don't, don't you martini, wait till I'm, October. I don't know. Then. You never know, Martini. Wink, wink. Please, I'm, I'm begging of you. I'm on my knees right now. <laughs> Please give me this bundle. I'll do anything. But you know, there's one last question before we end for today. Okay. Do you think okay. they'll release a Decepticon bundle? I was. If they do that, that's gonna be a lot more. Cause like, there's like, yeah, how many they're bigger. Are in that film? Like eight or nine or something. Like, uh, I think it was six. It was Bone Crusher, Barricade, Starscream, Megatron, Blackout, yeah. and I'm missing one. I hate my well, a brawl. I mean, brawl. It I was mean, brawl. It was brawl. It was brawl. Yeah, bro. I yeah. mean, and then if they really wanted to, they could include a small frenzy in Scorponok if they wanted. They could. If... They well, Blackout already comes with Scorponok, so it would just that, be that's... to make a frenzy. Well, that's what I'm saying. They could definitely do that. That's not, that's what I was wondering. I was like, if, since they're doing the Autobots, are they gonna do the Decepticons? But the Decepticons, I feel like, probably. would be over two hundred bucks or like. Yeah, it would. I think it would be probably two hundred and ten bucks. And like, but the, but it would still be cool because you know the backdrop would be like the Hoover Dam, mm. and like the highway. In my opinion, if they do the same yeah. thing that like this box set is doing, that it comes with two backdrops. Yeah, I mean the thing is, that my problem with it would be because I would also love to have that, but um, I have already Blackout and Starscream, so that would be kind of kind of bad but but then again well it'd be worse for me since crusher. i have blackout starscream brawl and megatron i'd be paying yeah. 200 bucks for bone crusher and barricade oh no that's not worth it man 
Yeah, I just, I think I have, I have, I think I might only have Megatron, I think. Mm. I think. I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I, I don't have Barricade, I don't have Brawl. Oh, no, wait. Oh, no, I have Megatron and Bone Crusher. Those are the only two I have. Uh, you have Bone damn, Crusher? Damn Holy shit, you, that's so lucky. Oh, that's so oh. lucky. Damn oh, you, dude. It, oh, yeah. No, I have... Oh, and I have Black... Oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm literally forgetting them. As I'm, Yeah, I have Megatron, Bone Crusher, and Black Oh, it's so cool. Yeah. yeah uh, that's, like, but, the only, like, 07 Decepticon I really want, like, Bone Crusher. Mm, yeah, is he, me too. Is he... I don't know. I can't... I think, well, him I and Barricade. Yeah, is he, like... I, I, I guessing since you guys say I'm so lucky, I'm guessing he's rare, I'm assuming. Yep, he's over $200 if you look at him in, on eBay. No. I might be remembering this wrong, but I could have sworn I got Bone Crusher at a Walmart. Like, I'm not even joking. Well, that could be definitely plausible, since Hasbro's control of which figure ends up which, and their stock count is absolute ass. Yeah, so, like, so, I, don't even know, I don't even know when I got him, but I could have sworn it was a while after he actually came out. So, like, I just got I guess, really lucky, and I just found him at a Walmart. I'm like, yeah, I'm picking him up, bro. <laughs> I, just, yeah. like, I took him, I was like, yep, getting him. To be honest, the only way that I would justify a Decepticon release for the 07 film was, well, you know, to release a Blackout. A, well, I don't know, it depends on whether you want Blackout slash Grindor back, because Optimus, all of Optimus releases were very rare, but Blackout, you know, just Blackout is rare. Grindor isn't. So mm -hmm. I guess it kind of justifies it. But it would also be, in my opinion, it would justify Bone Crusher. Mm -hmm. um, Brawl apparently is also a little bit rare. Maybe not that much, but a little bit. And a new chest piece for the 07 Megatron, considering that he reuses the, um, the same one that the Revenge, the Revenge of the Fallen has. And mm. it's definitely different, or it's supposed to be different, so I guess they could r give him a new chess piece and then, you know, <laughs> slap it in, into into the bundle. Apart, well, yeah. you know, both Starscreams also are very rare, both the Revenge of the Fallen and the, the 07 one, so I guess that also kind of justifies it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So... I also I also didn't even know that the multi-pack came with two backdrops. I, I, I kind of... Yeah. I kind of... Like... I like both the backdrops, but I kind of almost wish it came with the Mission City backdrop or a Mission City that backdrop. That cool, though. That would but, be really cool, but I'm that's... honestly grateful that it comes with Sam's house because yeah. <laughs> that is hilarious for a that's lot of cool, reasons. Yeah. <laughs> so with that, I think we end episode one of the real effing deal. Damn, that's a long name. The real effing deal podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it got pretty much longer than I expected, but that's good. I mean, we've been yeah. rambling, we've been talking, that's how it sometimes goes. Some episodes longer, some shorter. Mm -hmm. I, I think you guys can tell me we really like Transformers. Oh, yeah. What are you talking about? I don't like Transformers. No, I'm a, G, I'm a G1 purist. What are you talking about? I hate, I hate, I hate anything Beavers. I hate I, Flames. I hate... <laughs> I'm an Ice purist. God damn it, guys, I tried this just to be a heartwarming end, now you're again being toxic. <laughs> I hate you, you guys are, you guys are both Beaver fan, be, be, Beavers fans, and I hate you both. I don't well, ever want to talk to you again. I'm a G1 well, purist, I hate radios, I like my <laughs> B to have a voice, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like explosions. I hate them. <laughs> and and if there's one thing I really don't like, it's flames on Optimus. Oh yeah, no, Ru ruins the whole character. Ruins the whole movie. Yeah, yeah. I was watching Absolutely. the movie fine until I saw that Optimus had flames. Then I immediately turned yeah. it off and exited my house. And Garbage and Star movie. Scream and S Starscream has chicken legs, and if I want chicken, I go to KFC. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I hate him because he looks like a space Dorito. I hate him. Yeah, ever since I finished watching 07, I have never eaten another Dorito in my life. <laughs> and I, and yeah, I and, hate Megatron and... because he doesn't mass shift and turn to a small ass gun. <laughs> Megatron? More like Mega Bad. Exactly. <laughs> the fact that Lennox didn't use Megatron like a Glock or a small <laughs> P1911 gun in an absolute trash of a movie. <laughs> Zero out of ten. Imagine, imagine the Megatron transforms into a gun that like Lennox picks it up like whoop. It would have been so <laughs> dumb. Imagine if he kills like Blackout with me gun Megatron. <laughs> and Megatron the fact is like, that, oh, uh, 
the fact that Ironhide is in red ruins the whole film. Oh Can't yeah, and Absolutely. don't even get me started on Ratchet not being white. Oh god, yeah. hate it. Yeah, and, and Sam Woodwicky. Who is Sam Woodwicky? Oh, I need Spike Woodwicky. Spike. Spike is not in the film. Instantly <laughs> stop watching. Okay. And who who's uh, like who? Why, why is like why is Sam's father named like Ron? Where's uh, Spark Plug at, man? Yeah. Like this, this one yeah, sucks. Well, the, be- the best name <laughs> in a, a completely <laughs> real human name, Spark Plug. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Okay, guys. Uh, like, like like that just screams a human name. Like Sam isn't a human name. That just screams he's a robot. He must be a transformer. <laughs> <laughs> and with that I thank you all for watching the first episode and we'll see you guys in the next one bye oh, see you guys bye bye people oh jeez oh, I need